Hey folks, it's Joey Noe here, Folks on our LLC, and uh, the last of my shares of my new sword toys from uh, Devon Stiff and uh, Street Forge Armory. Um, so, uh, being able to, to play with some of the work that is being done by the Historical African Martial Arts Association, be able to share some of that with my students and rental clients. Um, so previously I showed the Nimcha and the, uh, the Kopesh, Egyptian Kopesh, um, both of those, North Africa, Egypt, Sudan, uh, uh, Corsairs, you know, more in the northern region. Now we're going to move into Ethiopia and the Shtel. Shtel has, uh, uh, is in the category of sickle swords. Um, there's a, a couple of different African styles that, that fit into this category. Uh, the Mbele is a more of a central African one that has a fun sort of, uh, like extra beak axe kind of thing on the, t the top front. I'll, I'll drop a picture in of one of those. Uh, those are, look pretty cool too. Um, but I've been, I've been uh, thinking about these for a while. Uh, I actually posted a YouTube video, what was that, like a year ago almost now, um, when Damon prompted folks to, uh, uh, to ask about stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it got me thinking. Because this is, this is really a unique thing. I mean, yes, there are some sickle forms shown in some of the historical European manuals, although uh, I think some of that probably did come from Africa and some of the people that are shown in those European fight manuals fighting with sickles uh, obviously are black. Um, so, you know, there was obviously crossover. Um, the cool thing about these is, as, as best I can tell, they were sharpened on both sides. So unlike something like a scimitar, which I also have here, where it was just sharpened on the outside and it was obviously a, a, a slashing weapon, a good cavalry weapon, um, and had a, a flat back that allowed you to do um, you know, braces and things if you wanted to, had a little more rigidity that way. You, you could stab around with a, a scimitar, but you're not gonna ever flip it around and use it uh, as a, a forward swept blade. Um, but with the shoto and the belly, this was quite common. And so it, it does uh, really focus the energy forward. It, it creates some interesting choreographic possibilities as well. So I wanna look at these both as a, a morphology of sword and a type of tool, as well as uh, the recreations as provided by Street Forge Armory. So uh, these were, I think, specifically sold as when I was like, hey, they have some extras they wanna sell off and I wanna support Street Forge Armory. Uh, I believe these were listed as sparring blades and so that's why this is so rounded at the end. Uh, they're both fairly safe. Like these, I don't think I need to do any extra rounding off for stage use, whereas some of the other blades were a little pointy and I'm gonna have to round things off a bit before I rent them out as stage props. These I think are probably good to go. Um, but it's the same steel, uh, same construction, single slab with uh, uh, wood, just kind of riveted on. There's a little bit of a weirdness with this one where there's like an extra third middle hole that's drilled through in the wood, but not pinned and not drilled through in the steel. Um, some slight cracking in the wood on this one as well. So this one's maybe a little bit of a rougher finish. We'll see if the wood on that holds up. I might need to do a little uh, epoxy coat or something on that to help keep it from falling apart. Um, whereas this one is a, uh, a little bit of a, a nicer wood in better shape. Uh, a little nicer finish on the steel as well, and a slightly thinner blade. Um, it's an interesting shape, but it, it fits well. Uh, it works in either direction, in my hand, which I appreciate. Uh, I've got to admit, I've, I've looked at some African swords and I'm like, how is that a comfortable grip? Uh, this one, really obviously intuitive, works just fine. Um, it's actually kind of like some of the Viking swords with the, the, the wide grip. It reminds me a little bit uh, of that in terms of the, the shape and the feel in use. But one of my big questions with any of these is, can they play nicely with my other blades? Um, I've compared uh, the previous ones, the, the Nimcha and the uh, uh, and the Kopesh with Baltimore Knife and Steel, with Purple Heart Armory and with Starfire. Those are all fairly common stage combat blades. Uh, and I can also compare with Rogue Steel now and with uh, Hanwe, this is a Hanwe practical single hand sword. Um, about the same-ish kind of length and, and mass. Um, so let's see how it holds up in terms of hardness. Yeah, looks fine. I mean, I'm seeing about equal small niches in the corners of each. Both of these are a little squared off rather than rounded. Um, when you get them, one of the things that I often do with my, my swords, if I find that edge on these, this is a, a less used one, later generation, 
um, as I'll round off the edges a little bit so that it doesn't have a, a corner because that corner is a weak point and also a slightly sharp point. So that gave me a little bit of a burr on the Hanway Practical and I can feel a little bit of a bump here, but it seems pretty equal and that's what you want when you're, when you're matching up blades so that if you had something that was, you know, I don't know, Crusades or something like that and you had the European swords versus the African swords, um, you don't want either one to get too bashed up playing with the other. Obviously something like pairing steel and aluminum is going to be a bad idea because the aluminum is going to get chewed to shit <laughs> and the uh, uh, steel is just going to destroy it. Um, but this seems, this all seems just fine. They're, they're equivalent hardness, um, so that's great. Here we have it with a uh, rogue steel hand and a half sword. Neil Massey, same deal. Yep, not seeing uh, particular damage on either one, so. This does seem like it is it is uh, up to par and able to play nice with others. So uh, as with many single-handed swords, these were often paired with shields of some sort. I don't have the uh, authentic kinds of African shields that they would have been used with, but a buckler is not too different. And this is one of the cool things about this curve of the shuttle is it allows you to be covered while still kind of coming around either your shield or your opponent's shield um, and to kind of hook in around. Uh, it also allows an interesting sort of either brush through or catch, uh, depending on how you want to play with binds uh, or affecting your opponent's blade, which is kind of fun. Um, I know from, from doing some uh, Zulu stick fighting with uh, uh, Marie Helen Kotze at the Patty Crane workshop ages ago, 2000, I think, um, there was some of that like reverse edge kind of reach around the shield stuff. Uh, to, to get above your opponent's shield and smack them in the head with a the, with the stick. That obviously would work really well with this kind of shuttle blade as well because you can come around and it actually hooks around and it becomes like a beak, uh, a beak stab in the, uh, you know, in, uh, to, the, to the top over the shield. Um, so a lot of fun possibilities with this. Everything from the, the slash of a scimitar to uh, a stab that reaches around the guard. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually getting to play with these uh, with a partner sometime or in class. And I think more than, than either of the other styles that I got at least, these are, are basically good to go for stage combat. Um, I think the, the needs of the sparring swords that, uh, that this was being pitched at uh, from Street Forge Armory and stage combat blades are gonna be pretty darn similar. Um, and I kind of like the, the somewhat rough look of some of these as well. Um, just because to me, most swords shouldn't look mass produced. <laughs> as a props person, I don't usually want exact uniformity between everybody in my medieval or earlier production or even Renaissance or earlier. Um, just, it just doesn't look right aesthetically. Um, so I love it when I can tell that each thing was hand done, that there's differences in them, and that you can see that there's there's a little bit of a, a roughness that it, it just doesn't look CNC machined. <laughs> so, well, I can certainly appreciate a, a well done, uh, uh, high technology performance sword by, by a Tinker or someone like the ones that I've used in some of my cutting videos. Um, aesthetically, I do prefer something that's a little bit rougher. Um, so I, I don't actually know historically how sharp these usually were. This kind of rounded or spatula tip wouldn't be historically inaccurate for something like a Viking sword, perhaps. Um, and I, I suspect it's not too far off for something like this, but I, I'll admit that that's a, a, a weak point in my knowledge of swords as a lot of African sword blades for a lot of us, which is why I think the work that Damon and others are doing is so important that we need to to realize the, the diversity and breadth of arts that are out there as options for those of us who are doing choreography or performance or martial competition or whatever. Um, so there needs to be more of this in the world. And for that to happen, people like Damon need to be supported. So I just encourage you to uh, look up Street Forge Armory, check out their Facebook page, uh, support them when you can. Damon's had an, a number of efforts he's done to try and <clears throat> build community uh, around your uh, African sword fighting. Uh, he's got a warrior woman training thing going on right now along with uh, the Woman King movie, kind of trying to, to capitalize on that. Um, I really hope he succeeds in all of these things and is able to pursue this full time. So, uh, Devon, thank you for the swords and best of luck with everything you do. And I look forward to playing with these more. Thank you.